Hello and welcome everyone to the next episode on SAP Build Process Automation Scenario. This is the part two of my last video where we are understanding and building a end-to-end -end process by utilizing a CAP service. Meet my business user Jennifer. She has a requirement to design and develop a process which actually reads up the order data from a CAP service in the cloud and then show an approval process for the business user on approval change the order status to released in the part one of this video series we have already created an action project if you have not seen that i will put the description of the link the link into the description of this video you can go ahead and check that or click the i button with that let's move on to part two of this scenario where now we are going to design and develop a process using our action project so you saw we created an action. Now we're going to develop a new process as well as a project in SAP BDP with SAP build process automation. So I will head over back to the system and go to lobby and create a new project. Automated process, process. Let's call it as task two, order approval. So approve the order of a shopping cart. Basically, these are all order belongs to a shopping cart actually. So let's create a brand new project. And under that, we will be creating our process. So we can come back and now we can start modeling our SAP build process. Let's call it as shopping cart approval process. Click on create button. And we will have very simple three steps over there indeed. So first one will be an API trigger where I'm going to receive the input from the user API start shopping. Click on create. And this will have just one process input which I will define as a order number order ID so somebody will have to pass me the order ID for the shopping cart which is a required input then we will actually have three steps first step is to read the order data so we browse our action and we will be referring our action library which we already have it over here where we are going to read the data from our action project make sure your action project is already released and published so now you can see it's already there task one get order data updated right so that's the get request and then we also have task one get order data update so both of them are there so we can refer this action add it it's added and then we will add an approval step let's create an approval form blank form so shopping cart approval step the third step will be to change the status. Okay, cart approval. Done. So approval form is being added. And once approved, we are going to change the status. So we add an action and we browse all the action again and we patch the status of the order. So let's patch it. Click on add button. Additionally, you can also trigger the email like approval or rejection email. You can do that. So you can see all the steps are read because the binding is missing. So let's start the binding one by one. So first one, we create a destination variable. Destination name, pass an input and we map here the order ID. Step one completed. Step two, we are going to design the form. Step three, we are going to pass again the destination variable name and pass the input here as order ID which is mandatory so we are going to pass the order ID and change the status to released All right so that was the requirement so we will pass here the new status as a hard-coded text yes so that has to happen now 
only thing which is left over is doing the form yeah design the form so double click to design our form where we will expect user to see all the order details so by the way all these order details are fetching fetched from our api right so we are going to just put all this information on the screen and you can notice that except the number the total amount rest all amounts are actually the string yeah so you can see here this all are number quantity price total but rest all are string so we have to be careful while designing the form so here we come and we add a headline kindly review order or shopping cart approval and we can just add a text there text field for order number and make it read only because user can only view the data so what else my next field my next field will be customer so let's add a text field customer make it read only then my next field will be date text field date my next field will be the status is not required total amount which is a number field be careful so we add a total amount number field then we can just add item for item we will add a table control so let's call it as order item the table name and then it has the columns inside so we add the first column as the product which was being sold read only add a number quantity amount yes so quantity is a number then price Another number is the total amount, subtotal, and finally the currency code. Perfect. So that's our form. Perfect. Nice. Now, once the form is ready, it's the time to do the binding with the form. So we can come back to perform all the binding to feed the data to our form. So let's do that. And here we come to perform the binding so you can see subject i can say shopping cart approval request and we can also pass the order id in there i will send this work item to myself so i pass my email id as a recipient so i myself will be receiving the work item in my inbox and then i will go to inputs so we map it with the customer which is coming from our action actually all the action data so you can see i'm just mapping all the corresponding data there so total was by mistake created as a text so let's update that it should be a number field yeah this was my mistake so i got to delete it and add a number field over there for the total so it should be a number field drag and drop and we save the form back again so if the data type is not correct the mapping would have compromise right we have to compromise with the mapping so we can come back now and there we go we can continue our mapping so this time i should be able to map with the output of my action with the total so that's my first action reading all the data let's bind all the item data and all the children's are automatically mapped except the currency code in the item okay perfect so that is our binding to feed the data to the form and once the binding is complete if user approves it goes under approval and it completes the status okay so we can release and deploy our changes to the cloud so let's switch to the released version and deploy the sap build process into the btp environment additionally i will again export yes so we can just map it with the destination shopping cart destination
and we deploy this. Great. So this is it and it's now deployed. So once it's the deployment is complete, you can go to the control tower and you can go to the environments, public environment, and we should be able to find a trigger for this process now. So it's doing a session check and then we should be able to find a trigger. And now what I can do is I can just come back and see the API start shopping, which is just deployed and I can view the trigger. So that's my trigger, which I will be utilizing in the next episode to make an API call to start our process. We should be then getting a work item. And eventually once we approve, the status of the order has to change. Yeah. All right. So that comes to the end of today's session. Thank you so much for viewing this video. Please like, share and subscribe the channel and kindly share it with your friends and colleagues who are interested to learn SAP build process automation. Thank you once again for your time and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.